Hey guys, I'm Jason. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at a solar panel and the way it works. On the surface, it all looks very simple. The sun shines on the panel and it produces electricity. But how can a box of metal, glass and plastic do it on its own? What is it in a solar panel that allows us to harvest energy from the sun? Well, let's find out together. To understand solar panels better, well, let's disassemble one. A fair warning, don't ever do this with one of your own panels. You won't be able to fix it. A solar panel in itself, it's like a sandwich. In the middle, we have solar cells, which are small wafers made of silicone. Now, these wafers are encapsulated from both sides. The front side is covered with glass and the back side is plastic. All of it is packed into an aluminium frame. Now let's return to those solar cells, the most important part of the panel. Silicon, which they are made of, is the second most abundant element on Earth after oxygen. However, it doesn't appear in a pure form, naturally. Most commonly, it occurs as its dioxide, also known as silica. The engineers extract pure silicon from silica, quartz or quartzite gravel. In the process of extraction, pure silicon forms large crystals or ingots. We slice them and we get solar cells. But why do we use silicon in the first place? Well, there's this little thing called photovoltaic effect and the whole solar industry is built upon it. Photovoltaic effect occurs when light hits certain material and it produces current. It was discovered back in 1842 by Alexander Becquerel. He found out that plates of platinum or gold immersed in an acid, neutral or alkaline solution and exposed to the light produce electricity. The first solar panel from selenium with a thin layer of gold was made in 1884 by Charles Fritz. But the history of the solar industry truly began in the 1940s when Russell Ohl from Bell Labs discovered that you can get a photovoltaic effect with silicon. Cells from silicon are much cheaper than the ones from selenium and gold and yeah, we still use it to this day. Now here's the problem. Silicon by itself is not conductive, which means that current can't travel through it. However, you can make it conductive by adding other chemical elements to it. And that's why each solar cell is composed of two types of silicon. One is called P-type silicon and the other is N-type silicon. You get P-type silicon when you combine or dope silicon with boron gas. A boron has three electrons in the outer shell and when they pair with four atoms of silicon, one remains. This last atom looks for another electron to fill the hole. Thus, we get a side of solar cell with positive energy. N-type silicon, on the other hand, is doped with phosphorus gas. Phosphorus has five electrons in the outer shell. When it's paired with four atoms of silicon, one remains, which results in a negatively charged side. When the two of these silicon types meet, Electrons start to wander across the junction section. One side is positively charged and the other one is charged negatively. Separated static negative and positive charges form an electric field across the junction. And when the sunlight hits the solar cell, silicon absorbs photons and it creates high energy state electrons. The electric field pushes these negatively charged electrons and positively charged holes to the opposite sides. This separation of negatives and positive charges across the junction section is voltage. Thin metal fingers at the top of the cell collect mobile electrons and send them through the wires. And that's when electrons do the work for us and power everything we have. By itself, solar panels produce direct current. It can be used as is, uh, for example, to charge batteries. However, most of our home appliances require alternating current. And that's why an inverter is a necessary part of the home solar system. DC from panels flow to the inverter, which it turns into AC. From there, the current goes either to your home appliances or into the grid, where it can be used by someone else. And that's how the most simple solar systems work. So what is one solar panel capable of? Well, a silicon cell by itself puts out about half a volt. In a solar panel, cells are stringed together to have higher voltage. When you have 12 photovoltaic cells, that's enough to charge a cell phone. One solar panel generally has 60 or 72 cells. Sometimes they are sliced in half to lower resistive losses and you get 122 or 144 half cell modules. Panels have different power ratings. 
from under 100 to over 600 watts. So let's say we have a simple 400 watt solar panel. When installed correctly, it can produce around one and a half to a couple of kilowatt hours per day. This amount of energy might be just enough for one load of electric dishwasher. Or it can sustain a 75 watt light bulb for about a day. The average energy consumption of an American house is at about 30 kilowatt hours per day. To get that amount of energy with the sun, you need to build a 5 to 6 kilowatt solar system. That's 12 to 20 panels. Today, 5 kilowatt is in fact the most popular size of a home voltaic installation in the US. And that's basically how solar panels and solar systems work in a nutshell. How do you feel? Did the panels and the whole subject of solar energy become a bit more tangible? Let us know in the comments below. And I just hope that I managed to make it all a little bit easier for you. Oh, and if you liked the video, please go and check out our magazine and follow us on Instagram. You can find all those links in the description below. And that's all for this one. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.